regardless of what your media hype tells you, remember this, your desire for romance is your desire for change from a limited and spiritually unfulfilling existence, to recognizing and experiencing your unlimited creative spiritual potential within. The next time you have a sexual urge, look around you, what have you been watching, reading or participating in which created this desire? Men, when you see a physically beautiful woman, is your first thought admiration and appreciation of this gift of loveliness and do you wonder about the loveliness and beauty of her spirit? Or, instead, do you first wonder about the pleasure you would receive, if you could have sexual union with her? And the same holds true, for you women who call yourselves liberated which usually first means, sexually liberated and same equal rights, as men to have many casual sexual encounters. Recognize that this sexual urge is really your unfulfilled creative potential screaming to be released from the self-imposed limit or boundary of the physical sexual act. Act 1. To play the part of, impersonate. 2. To serve temporarily or as a substitute. To pretend. The sexual act is limiting, substituting and impersonating your creative and spiritual unfoldment to know God. When you truly understand and recognize this truth, your creative spiritual unfoldment can no longer be frustrated and limited to the repetition of a silly and truly spiritually unfulfilling sexual act. Does this mean you are expected, myself and God, to stop all sexual activity now? Only, if it is your choice made with the joy of truly understanding and thus having freedom of detachment from this addiction and no desire to procreate. For most of you, especially adults, sexual behavior has now become addictive, so you must treat it as such. Remove as much of the temptation from your presence as possible, just as the alcoholic must remove himself from bars and must remove the alcohol from his home. Be gentle with self, carefully abide by the list of ten items above which are strictly forbidden sexual behaviors, including adultery. If you are single or married and have addiction to the sexual act, use occasional masturbation, as the lesser of the evils, if you must. If you are happily married and both have enjoyed your addiction to the monogamous mutual masturbation of your sexual act, both partners will need to become detached for the addiction to be gone. So be gentle with self and your mate, but be aware and responsible to consequences, such as pregnancy, and persistent in your goal, to self to release and detach from all things of physical manifestation. Simply recognize without punishing self with guilt and shame that this is a transgression against the creative spirit of life within you. For a time accept that you will have desire, because you are addicted and many of you understand it as an extension of your love. Do not punish self or other, let the desire dissolve naturally within each partner. As you begin the unfoldment and adventure of discovering your creative spiritual potential, you will be surprised, because at some point you will find that the sexual act is no longer appealing to either of you. You will be detached and no longer have interest in it. 16. You must do unto others, as you would have them do unto you. Also called the Golden Rule. The Golden Rule. How true it is that, if ones would really think about, how they treat one another, and consider that they are all one, that most of your petty perceived differences would dissolve. Ask yourself, how you, when you honor the Spirit of God within, truly like to be treated by others. Here is a start, for you, with respect, with reverence, with honor, with worthiness, with enthusiasm, with patience, with tolerance and understanding, with forgiveness, with kindness and courtesy, with caring, with appreciation, with generosity, with interest in your conversation, with love, with consideration, with honesty and integrity, with trust, with friendship and with harmony. Now, do you treat others in the same ways described above, how you would like to be treated? Do you even treat yourself in the same ways described above? If you do not even honor yourself, how do you expect to receive honor and respect from others? Treat others honorably and with integrity, kindness and tolerance and expect that they will treat you the same. If they do not treat you with the same respect, honor yourself enough to recognize their transgression, call it to their attention and then leave their presence. And Jesus Emmanuel told the people, Ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For he who asks of his spirit receives, and he who seeks through the power of spirit, finds and he who knocks at the door of his spirit, to him it will be opened. Who is there among you who, if his son asked him for bread would give him a stone? Or, if he asked you for a fish would you offer him a serpent? 
Therefore, if you, even though you are being wicked, can still give your children good gifts, how much more will your spirit give unto you, if you request it? End quote. The Spirit of God within you always gives you what you need, if you but put aside your altered ego and humbly commune with your spirit. All the power of the Father exists within you to give unto you that which your spirit needs to lovingly sustain life and give joy, fulfillment, and inner peace. You only need but ask the Father within to show you, to tell you, to give you that which you need to sustain in His service, that of light, of love, of joy. In all things thy, His, will be done. There is a saying, be careful what you ask for, you just might get it. But, this saying gives recognition to your power of manifestation, and how, when you selfishly view life from the fog of the altered ego, you may not truly understand what your spirit within needs. You may be unpleasantly surprised at what the altered ego conjures up, for you, as consequence of denying the will of the Father within you. 17. Evil, adversaries of God must always wear a sign of their evilness. By their fruits ye shall know them. One of the biggest signs of the evil ones is their hypocrisy. 1. The pretense, pretending, of having feelings or characteristics which one does not possess, especially deceitful presumption of virtue. 2. One who pretends to be pious and virtuous without really being so. Emmanuel spoke to the people in and they called his name Emmanuel, I am Sananda and said, Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites who keep cups and bowls outwardly clean yet inside they are full of rapaciousness and greed. First you must purify that which is inside the cup, so that what is on the outside also becomes, and remains, pure. So you, too, appear godly and good in front of people, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and falsehood and violations. Woe unto you hypocrites who build tombs for the prophets and adorn the graves of the just, and speak, if we had been at the time of our fathers, we would not have become guilty with them, in the shedding of the prophets' blood, therefore, you fulfill the measure of your fathers, since you end your life without understanding, and you will have trouble learning in the future. You generation of vipers, how can you be great in spirit without having any understanding? All the just blood which was shed through you, on earth, will come back to you, beginning with the first prophet whom your fathers and forefathers murdered, to the blood of Ascharius, the son of Berachtus whom you have killed between the temple and the altar, and therefore, all the blood of the future which will be shed will be of your own accountability. Verily, verily I say to you, all this shall come upon you, and upon your race, for a very long time yet to come and pass. End quote. So you will find that hypocrisy does not belong to the kingdom of God. The ones who declare their spiritual wealth, piety and richness, who declare themselves chosen simply, because they belong to this or that religion or race are fools and they are hypocrites, because what they outwardly say they are and believe in, and what they actually secretly think and do are most often quite different. And Jesus the Christ Emmanuel gives us more signs to help us recognize the evil ones. Beware of false prophets and scribes who come into you in sheep's clothing, but inside they are like raving wolves, and preach to you humility and shrines, false deities and gods, and preach to you of humility to idols and false teachings. Beware of those who forbid you access to wisdom and knowledge and tell you to not go forth to hear what perhaps is truth, for they speak to you only to attain power over you and to seize your goods and belongings. Always search beneath the coverings to inspect that which they do not tell you and further, check carefully those things that they extract from you. Truth and wisdom in truth are given with no price of treasure nor power of force. You shall recognize these ones by the fruit they bear. Can a person gather grapes from the thorns, and figs from the thistles? Therefore, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a bad tree brings forth wicked fruit.